Hello everyone. I've dug up a YouTube video that I wanted to do a response on. I've actually wanted to do this one for a while. I've just finally got around to it. But when I sat down to do the response, I discovered that the video was so rapid fire and so uh, over edited and so on that uh, trying to do an intercut response just wasn't going to work well. Uh, so I decided to uh, actually work off a transcript of the questions. Uh, so these are the questions as I heard them when I was uh, uh, watching the video and I had to re-watch some parts of it to get the questions out of it. Uh, this is a BuzzFeed video. It's called 36 Questions Women Have for Men. The link is should be on the screen right now. I'll try and remember to put it in the description as well. Uh, anyway, as I said, I was going to do an intercut uh, commentary or a response, but the, it was going to be far too painful to edit it all. So I decided to go in this, this manner. Uh, any errors in the questions compared to the original in the video are entirely mine, uh, but these are the questions at least uh, at least as, as much as I, I heard them, any typos are mine. So anyway, uh, without further uh, rambling, let's get on, get on with things here. Uh, first question, how does it feel to be the same sex as Donald Trump? Seriously, that's just a dumb question. Uh, it implies that uh, all men are the same or that I should be embarrassed to be a man just because Donald Trump may or may not be an idiot. But the same question could be applied, uh, replace Donald Trump with Hitler or Stalin or, or somebody like that. Or you could flip it and uh, ask a woman, how does it feel to be the same sex as Mata Hari or uh, Monica Lewinsky or, or somebody like that? Uh, or uh, find some particularly nasty specimen of uh, humanity that happens to be female and apply this question. It's totally stupid and it has the implication that all men are the same. And that's just dumb. And why should I be embarrassed to be a man just because there's an idiot down the road that happens to be a man? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, next up, why do you hate rom-coms? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say I hate them, but I don't generally enjoy them. And mostly because the situations and the writing and so on is just that much claptrap. It, it's just that far divorced from any sort of reality. And a lot of the ones I've seen, at least seen enough to form any kind of a judgment on, they're generally uh, portraying men to be bumbling idiots or worse. Uh, or they're portraying women to be bumbling idiots, or worse, or both. Uh, or they're portraying them to be sex-obsessed, or they're purveying uh, uh, stereotypes uh, uh, of uh, relationships like the uh, telepathy uh, effect that is so popular in romantic uh, comedies and so on, where uh, one partner somehow knows what the other is thinking without talking to them. That just, you know, things like that. It's just so stupid. And that's why I, I don't particularly like them. But I wouldn't go so far as to say I hate them. And I, I certainly wouldn't go so far as to try and ban them or anything like that. If, if there's people that want to watch them, fine. Uh, more power to them. Uh, of course, this also had the follow-up, or do you just feel you need to hate them? I don't feel I need to anything with them. I don't feel I need to watch them, like them, hate them, anything. They just are, and I don't generally watch them. There you go. Okay, uh, why do you make women sit around and talk about men in movies when y'all easily just sit around and talk about boobs for hours? Uh, well, first of all, the two parts of this don't f are kind of non sequitur. But uh, I assume that there, this is talking about uh, screenwriters. Uh, and th th maybe, uh, for all I know, women do talk about men. Uh just sit around and talk about men. Uh, I don't know. Uh, certainly, uh, men, sure, we can sit around and talk about boobs, but not for hours on end. Uh, we'll end up talking about other things, like uh, asses even. Uh, but uh, aside from that, 
seriously, uh, there there's better things to argue about, like the latest sports scores or something like that. So we really we don't sit around and talk about boobs for hours. Uh, we've got better things to do. Um, at least most of us do. I'm sure there's there's men around there that could do this and maybe and probably do do it. And I'm sure there are women that sit around and talk about men like portrayed in the movies. But I'm not assuming that all men or all women are represented by these stereotypes. Uh, next, why do you automatically assume that you won't like a t TV or movies that star a female lead? Well, I don't assume that. A great many of the uh, uh, TV shows and movies I enjoy immensely have uh, very strong female leads. What I, and so I try not to prejudge based on who the lead is. There's a great many where, that have a male lead that I decide I don't, I'm not going to like before I even bother watching it because the marketing material makes it clear it's not something I'm interested in. Uh, and that would apply same for fe a female-led uh, production. I don't make my choice based on who the star is. Uh, yeah, and quite frankly, I think most people don't. Uh, this is just another example of assuming that uh, gender plays a role in choices when it probably isn't the major deciding factor. And besides, a good female lead uh, is really a nice thing. Uh, men, uh, the heterosexual men at least, I uh, certainly enjoy watching a, a kick-ass woman uh, doing her thing, right? Um, now, uh, next up, uh, why are you surprised when women are funny? I'm surprised when anyone is funny. I think for the most part, people aren't funny, at least not in general. Um uh, now, I've not noticed uh, any particular trends one way or the other. I don't pay attention to the comedy circuit or whatever. Uh, but uh, I haven't noticed a lot of uh, the particularly successful comedians are female. I don't know whether that's because there are fewer women bothering to do the uh, comedy thing or if uh, people are happier with the particular uh, approach the men are taking with comedy these days. I don't know. But uh, if I'm surprised that ended, that someone is funny, it's because uh, I'm not expecting them to be funny just because most people aren't. That's what it comes down to. Uh, next up, why do you think we are obsessed with you when we hook up? Uh, well, I don't think that, but uh, why would you hook up with somebody if you weren't at least interested, you know? Uh, it, really, that's what it comes down to. Uh, next up, why can't I sleep with as many people as I want without being judged? Well, um, guess what? You're being judged whether you do that or not. Um and who's doing the judging? Uh, this is the thing that I really want to know. Uh, there was a sort of follow-up in the video uh, suggesting that men are considered heroes for doing the same thing, but I, I would beg to differ on that. Uh, men are not generally regarded as heroes because they manage to sleep around. That's a stereotype that is uh, uh, kept alive by the uh, entertainment industry. Uh, seriously, most men uh, don't want to sleep with dozens of women. Uh, it's too much work. Uh, seriously. Uh, but, of course, there is a subset that do fall into that category. And there are women who sleep around, but uh, quite frankly, I suspect a lot of them would figure that it's too much work, too. Uh but seriously, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. If you sleep around a lot, you're probably being judged. That's really what it comes down to. 
Um, now, why do you consider a woman a tease if she doesn't sleep with you after three dates, but a slut if she sleeps with you on the first date? Well, I don't think anything of the sort on either side of that, but I rather suspect that there's a societal influence here. Uh, and uh, this is not something that any one individual can change, like, like really, when you, when you get down to it. Uh, should this be the case? No, probably not. But uh, what, it, what it really means is there's a societal problem if, if we want to change that. And this is, again, something that seems to be uh, uh, kept alive by the entertainment industry. And then we go on, in what world does no mean yes? Well, this is just inflammatory. No never means yes in any context. However, there is a stereotype that is, uh, or maybe not stereotype, but a, uh, a belief that's put out there uh, that, like, based on the structure of a lot of uh, uh, movies and, uh, and television and so on that uh, uh, women want to be dominated somehow, and maybe some do, but uh, that, uh, that somehow the, uh, the man needs to, uh, to somehow read the woman's mind to determine that the no, the playing hard to get means try harder, uh, but also somehow be able to differentiate that from a no that actually means no. This is impossible. So uh, clearly, no has to mean no. But uh, the, the women have to uh, understand that if they say no, then they, they, they can't be upset when the poor, poor bloke doesn't continue pursuing them. Uh, so we can't have this uh, movie uh, a standard which requires telepathy to work, uh, is that just doesn't work. And, and we do have some societal uh, bits here, uh, but basically society is teaching young men that they need to pursue the women hard or they'll never get, uh, get a woman. And, some, and to some extent that's true, uh, but that's a societal thing. But it's reinforced strongly by the entertainment industry. Uh, in particular, in, in, in rom-coms, believe it or not. So, you know, uh, we got we, we to gotta have better communication all around and consistency in the communication. Uh, next up, why do you say that women are too emotional to be leaders than justify catcalling by saying men just can't control themselves? Well, first of all, uh, one doesn't have much to do with the other here. Uh, some women are too emotional to be leaders. So are some men. Just different kind of emotional uh, in, in the average case. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, we should be judging somebody's worth to be a leader based on their actual ability to be a leader. Uh, to dem if they can demonstrate that they make sensible calls uh, in in various situations that demonstrate their ability to be a leader. It doesn't matter, men or women. Uh, now, catcalling. Uh, I can't honestly say uh, I've uh, justified catcalling at all. Uh, catcalling certainly happens, and uh, this might shock some people, but it does go the other way too. Uh, particularly attractive men do experience uh, an equivalent to catcalling. Uh, it's partly human nature, I'm sure, but it's largely societal. So if we want to change this, we have to change society. Um, but as I said, these two, the two parts of this don't actually uh, relate directly. Uh, on average, maybe women are more emotional. I don't know. I haven't done the research. Uh, and certainly emotion tends to be a bad quality in, for an effective leader. But uh, men tend toward uh, 
irrational choices too, the uh, anger and rage side of things. And uh, that's not conducive to good leadership either. Uh, so uh, why we should just say, okay, if you are a, uh, a good leader, you've proven yourself a good leader, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, meritocracy, there's something to it. Uh, next, why do you think that just because you're nice to me, I owe you my body? Well, I don't. Um, this, though, is one of those uh, things that is uh, uh, kept alive by uh, the entertainment industry and also uh, a lot of uh, men think this uh, because that's what they're taught. Uh, I, I don't hold with that myself, but it also goes the other way. Just because you are nice to me doesn't mean I owe you my body. It goes both ways, okay? Um, next up, why would you ever send an unsolicited dick pic? I wouldn't. And most men wouldn't. I don't know why some do. It's just stupid. Um, uh, next up, why do you feel like it's okay to, har to harass women or make offensive comments about women, but when somebody does it to your sister, it's not okay? Uh, well, I don't think it's okay to, har to harass anyone. However, offensive comments are not something that should generate a particular amount of hostility. Uh, being offended is perfectly acceptable, but my right to offend you uh, is also perfectly acceptable, and it goes the other way. Your right to offend me is fine as well. Um, I've never had to deal with the uh, somebody uh, dissing my sister thing, uh, and at least not on any particular scale. Uh, I don't know how I would have reacted. Yeah, probably not not uh, so over the top like you see in, in uh, fiction and so on. But again, some of this is societal. But also, uh, it tends to be that I happen to know my family a great deal better than some random person making comments. Uh, tribalism, uh, really, and that's going to mean that it elicits a much stronger reaction when somebody does something that can be perceived as an attack against my sister than somebody who is uh, uh, making comments about some third party that I don't have any particular I investment in. But still, I don't think it's okay to, to harass anyone, men or women. And offensive comments, generally probably better if they're not made. Uh, next up, how does it feel to interrupt me when I'm in the middle of making a point during a meeting? Well, first of all, there are a great many reasons that, that I might interrupt somebody during a meeting. Uh, and even if they're making a point, uh, one of which might be that the point is off topic to the meeting. Uh, another could be that the... Uh, uh, that the, I guess, uh, uh, the point is just stupid, uh, or that has been done to death, or any number of things. Uh, and sometimes there's something more important that has to be dealt with first. There's a great many reasons to interrupt somebody. Just assuming that you're being interrupted because you're a woman is just... That's just assuming facts that are not necessarily in evidence. And it goes the other way, too. Uh, if, if a meeting is mostly women and uh, I get uh, interrupted, then, uh, you know, that basically turns the tables on the, the whole question as well. Um, next up, why do you have to, to sit, it's supposed to be sit, not sight, with your legs so wide open? Um, yeah, uh, men have the, those dangly bits between their legs, uh, which uh, seriously hurt if they get uh, compressed. And it's, it's just, uh, quite frankly, if you had those same dangly bits, you would sit with your legs spread out a little bit too. 
Uh, it's simply a uh, avoiding pain avoidance thing. Uh, seriously, uh, that's what it really comes down to. Some men, uh, you know, put their legs way wider than they need to be, but uh, you know, that's a different thing altogether. Um, also consider that there is a slightly different pelvic structure between men and women. Uh, women's uh, legs are set slightly further apart, uh, which means keeping their legs parallel is actually easier. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, you know, it's basically it's anatomical. Uh, anyway, uh, right, next up. Why are women perceived as the weaker sex, though we literally birth you? Well, first of all, uh, women on average are weaker than men on average. This is a biological fact. Physically, women tend to be weaker on average. Um, and uh, childbirth is a different thing altogether. Uh, it certainly uh, is not uh, something I'd ever want to, uh, to experience. Uh, and it's... There's some evidence that I've encountered that women have a higher pain threshold, uh, which makes sense. Uh, but weaker in the physical strength sense, yeah, women are on average weaker. They're also on average smaller. It just, that's just how the world is. It's an average. Um, next up, uh, why is it so bad to show your emotions? Well, it's not. Uh, men, however, don't feel emotions quite the same way women do, near as I can tell. Uh, we don't feel them quite as strongly, I think. Uh, but also, there's a societal component. Most men are taught uh, to uh, control their emotions. Uh, we're, we're taught to control our violent emotions, which is not a bad idea. Uh, but there, I'm sure there's a large societal component, and I suspect there's also a component that uh, men just react differently to the same emotional stimulus. Uh, next up, why are you always trying to prove your masculinity to me? A lot of that is societal. A lot of that is uh, just men being men. Uh, men uh, don't have to work particularly hard to be men because uh, that's what we are right uh, but also there's a lot of cultural uh, pressure to uh, to come across as masculine uh, and some of that is uh, due to uh, women actually wanting that uh, or at least the perception that women want that so uh, this is societal, cultural, and there's probably uh, an element of nature involved in that as well. Uh, next up, why the fuck isn't it ladylike to cuss? That's societal, uh, entirely. Uh, personally, I don't care, but it's a societal thing. Uh, next up, when did words get genders? Uh, go back and study uh, linguistics. Go look at a lot of languages in the world, and you'll find out that a great many languages have gender for, for a great many types of words. Uh, but the way this is meant, uh, this is just uh, uh, more on this the, the equality shtick. Um, but some words do have an implied gender, some don't, right? Uh, but... Do some research on linguistics. Uh, that might be uh, eye-opening. Next up, why is it your first instinct to doubt women who have been sexually violated or raped? Uh, my first instinct is to doubt anybody that makes any accusation against anybody. I want some sort of evidence. I need a credible... Uh, I, I need credible... Uh, evidence, a credible story. Uh, there, there needs to be something more than just an accusation. See, this question assumes that the uh, the women who have been provably uh, uh, 
violated or raped or that uh, credibly there was something happened uh, are the only ones that ever make accusations. But that's not true. There are just enough false accusations out there that there has to be doubt. Doubt has to be the, the, the first principle. Doubt in the absence of evidence makes sense. That's not to say that uh, the doubt should be taken so far as to ignore uh, any uh, accusations or complaints. Uh, it's just uh, that uh, some level of doubt is warranted for any accusation of any kind. Uh, next up, why do you assume a woman's angry because she's on her period? Well, I don't. Uh, I assume she's angry when she's, well, acting angry. Uh, I assume she's irritated if she's acting irritated. It has nothing to do with her period. Though, uh, to be fair, I can understand how uh, the symptoms I've uh, heard about for uh, periods uh, that some women experience, I can understand why that would leave them irritable or at least seeming to be angry uh, and so on. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm sure the whole period thing is at the very least disgusting. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to base my assessment on actual behavior rather than, oh, she's on her period, right? Uh and some of this assumption comes from popular media and uh, society as a whole. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the issues here may be societal. Uh, but I, I suspect there is uh, something, uh, something there. Uh, next up, uh, why do you think women that wear makeup are false advertising? Well, I'm not sure that I do. I don't think about it too much at all really uh, but if you you want to wear makeup that's fine uh, but don't be surprised if when your makeup is off somebody is rather surprised that you don't look quite like what they expected uh, seriously uh, next up we could say the same thing about your dick size well um, sure uh, but until it's acceptable to wander around with my dick out uh, it's going to have to be left to everybody's imagination. Uh, not that I actually want to wander around with my dick out, by the way. Uh, there's good reasons not to, one of which is comfort. Um, next up, why isn't it weird that there's a bunch of old white men sitting in a room making legislation about what I can and can't do with my body? Well, there's also young white men and uh, women of all uh, stripes and uh, black guys and brown guys and red guys, and all, all sorts of them are sitting around in rooms making legislation about all manner of things. As a matter of fact, in uh, a lot of uh, countries uh, like Canada, United States, etc., we actually hire them to do that. So why would it be weird if that's what we've decided to do to govern the nation? Next up, why are straight guys so obsessed with lesbians? Well, I don't know. Uh, I just suspect it's more, uh, you know, hot lesbians. Uh, and the obsession probably comes from the same, uh, same source as being obsessed with hot women, period. Um, I don't know. I'm not so much obsessed with lesbians, so you know this is an overgeneralization. But uh, uh, seriously, uh, um, I, I guess uh, how would you know they're lesbians unless they're actually uh, getting it on or uh, making out or something like that too? So uh, maybe some guys get off on that. I I, I don't know. Um, how does it feel to get kicked in the balls? Um, seriously, you don't want to know. Uh, I rather suspect the pain is uh, uh, much, much worse than 
kidney stones or possibly childbirth. I don't know uh, how. Uh, I've not been kicked hard in the balls, but uh, given the experience when uh, I've, uh, you know, minor uh, compression even, uh, it's it, uh, you've seen men flinch when uh, some when some guy gets kicked in the nuts on TV. Yes, uh, every one of us flinches for a damn good reason. Um, next up, do you ever get tired of trying to be manly all the time? No, because I don't bother trying to be manly. I either am or I'm not. Uh, next up, why are you so afraid of gender equality? I'm not. Uh, I'm all for actual equality. And that's equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. Next up, why do I deserve to be paid less than you? And then it followed up with, in what world does 77 cents equal a dollar? In what world does 68 cents equal a dollar? How is that fair? Well, for, first up, uh, you might deserve to be paid less than me depending on the job you're doing. You might be doing a job that is, on average, paid less, period. Uh, so in that case, you, you would deserve to be paid less. Uh, maybe the job you're doing is the same one I'm doing, but you have less seniority. Maybe. Um, maybe you're doing something that might be the same job, but you can't do the physical component of it while I can. Uh, maybe you have less qualifications than I do. And flip it on its head, Maybe you're being paid more than me because you're doing a job that gets paid more or you have better qualifications. Uh, sure, and this is all uh, to, you know, referring to the so-called gender pay gap, which there is a gap, but when you, uh, when you control it for the choices made by the participants in the workforce, the jobs they choose to do, uh, and a, a whole lot of things like that, the majority of that pay gap disappears. Now, depending on the industry and the uh, place, uh, there might be more of an effect or less of an effect, and in some cases, it goes the other way. Uh, now, the follow-up bits are clearly inflammatory. 77 cents doesn't equal a dollar. 68 cents doesn't equal a dollar. 77 cents does not equal 68 cents. Uh, but it wouldn't be fair. But, but it, it, like, fairness has nothing to do with it. Um, um, you have to look at all of the, the variables, not just one variable. Uh, next up, why are you intimidated by a woman who makes more money than you? I'm not. Why are opinionated women seen as bitches? Often because they act like bitches. And by that, I mean arrogant, uh, generally uh, dismissive of, of others. Uh, and here's the thing. Opinionated men are seen as... Uh, as jerks or pricks or whatever too so you know this is you, this is just kind of this, this is just slanted uh, let's just be honest there uh, why aren't you speaking up when you hear male friends behind closed doors make jokes that are offensive to women because I don't bloody care um, and here's the thing. If you try to convince me that women don't make offense, offensive jokes or uh, sexist jokes, uh, well, <clears throat> no, I'm not going to buy that. Everybody makes these kind of jokes. And if it's behind closed doors, nobody's getting hurt. Seriously. Uh, and quite frankly, nobody has the right not to be offended. And finally... Why are you so afraid of recognizing your own privilege? I'm not afraid of recognizing any privilege I might have. Uh, 
But for the most part, I don't have any particular privilege. Um, oh, sure, I have the privilege and the luck to have been born where I was. And as a result, I have a vastly better life than the vast majority of the humans on the planet. Uh, so, sure, I'm not afraid of recognizing that privilege. But I don't have any particular privilege above any particular other person. Not by virtue of being male, for sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not afraid of recognizing a privilege, privilege I might have. But you've got to show me that privilege, not just assert that it exists. Anyway, this is all of the questions. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, some of my answers weren't exactly uh, friendly there. Uh, but uh, it's uh, something that, uh, uh, you know, you, you risk with something off the cuff like this. So uh, basically, uh, this is yet another uh, clickbaity BuzzFeed uh, video slash article thing. Uh, BuzzFeed is a goldmine for these things. Uh, and it does kind of uh, typify uh, the uh, types of questions that the feminist uh, agenda uh, tends to put forward. Uh, a lot of these questions were leading, loaded, or, or whatever, and certainly at odds with actual reality. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, all for this one. Uh, that, that's the, the questions uh, answered. Uh, I will mention that I have a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash lostwizard. Uh, if you want to support the channel at all, uh, feel free. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, also, uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. And of course, if you've uh, watched this far, thanks for watching.